What is up everybody? Welcome back to the garage and today we're doing something really cool on the last live show Thursday. Uh, somebody had asked a specific question about how to use the mass airflow sensor in order to uh, fill out a volumetric efficiency map and I thought man that's, that seems pretty interesting. There's a lot of math that's probably involved, but theoretically you should be able to do that. So I kind of dove out there, started looking at the different ways of calculating stuff and building a formula that would allow you to take in your mass airflow sensor, uh, your, your rate, not the frequency, but the actual calculated mass, uh, the temperature of your air, your IAT, and then multiply that out uh, and divide it by Basically, it's going to be your uh, engine speed, uh, your displacement, and I'm trying to think of what the other. Nonetheless, I'll put the I'll put the calculation down at the bottom of the screen for the whole thing. What I've done to try and test that out is I've gone in on my truck and I have zeroed out the uh, VE tables, the and then calculated it. So the coefficients now are zero. I found something interesting out while doing that. Whenever you go in on the virtual VE tables on the Gen 5s and the Gen 4s, you have the option of the manifold switch open or close. So one of them's on top, one of them's on bottom. And I always suggest that you copy your, your settings over whenever you make changes. Make changes to the first one, copy it over to the second one. Well, uh, if you don't have the manifold switch, it uses the open table as opposed to the closed table, which I always assumed that it used the closed table, but I never knew for a fact. So I went in there and uh, let me double check that. Yes, okay. It uses the open table as opposed to the closed because I went in originally, zeroed out the closed table, loaded that in, and the truck still fired up and ran perfectly fine. So I went in after that to the open table, zero it out, calculated the coefficients, and I'll show you here in a second, loaded that in, and you know what, I'm just gonna go over here and I'm gonna try and start this thing. It's the worst that could happen. Absolutely nothing. So, we have the mass airflow sensor disabled. We are in speed density only. The VE table has been zeroed out. I have built this formula and I have a log, one of the last logs that I took while dialing in the mass airflow sensor. I'm going to apply that to a log from last week where I have all the values that I need to calculate a VE table. You'll see it. We're gonna copy that thing over, paste it in and see whether or not it'll work, whether or not it'll at least get us up and running uh, if we do dramatic changes to the engine, give us a base platform to start on so we can start tuning out from there. But since this is pretty crazy crap that we're dealing with here, let's rock the disclaimer out and then we will jump down into the laptop and I'll show you what I'm talking about. This video is intended for educational purposes only. Improper tuning can cause catastrophic mechanical damage and you should do your own research before attempting any changes like this to a vehicle. Attempt custom tuning at your own risk. Okay, here we are. We've got everything opened up here. This is the tune that I have loaded into the truck right now. So if I go up into virtual volumetric efficiency, here is what my tables look like. This is the switch close table. As I said, that is not the one that these that do not have the switch actually run off. They run off the switch open table, but both of them are zeroed out. Because if we go back in and we look at our constants, our VE coefficient constants, here you can see that they are zeroed out. Now the manifold switch open and close for displacement on demand, I didn't worry about zeroing those out because I have displacement on demand disabled, so they should not factor into that. Uh, so on the other side of it though, let's look at the scanner and look at, this is, man, the table. We'll jump into that here in a second. Let's look at the math first. So here is the math that I have going on here. A lot of stuff going on. So we have uh, mass airflow times IAT, that's in grams per second and Kelvin. And those are bracketed off to uh, order of operations. Remember order of operations is important on that. And then on the second set, that's gonna be divided, but once again, this section is bracketed off, and that is uh, 
Manifold absolute pressure in bar divided by barometric pressure. That is pressure ratio because Gen 5s use pressure ratio as opposed to just bar pressure or mass manifold air pressure on the VE tables. On the Gen 3s and the Gen 4s that use manifold pressure, you would just be able to get away with having your manifold absolute pressure in there in bar. And then that is multiplied uh, by uh, our RPM. And this is our displacement, and that is in meters cubed. So, very, very small number. So you take meters cubed, multiply it by your cylinder count, and in this case it gets us 0.0053, 5 5.3 liters. And then this number here is the uh, math that aligns this based off of there is some scaling done on the uh, VE table. So this math should scale our output number to match the scale that the table uh, lines up with for the ECM. That is going to be the biggest variable whether or not this can be replicated in other situations. The easiest way to find this is to do all this without that number in there and then compare your output versus your actual VE table on a stock vehicle and then you can pick a point at a specific RPM and map pressure or pressure ratio, do the math to get this scaling number here. So that being applied produces this table that we see up here. Let me see if I can pull this down. This is the equivalent table to that run that I did with the mass airflow sensor. The VE table, this speed density was disabled. None of this was being calculated. This is all based off of it. Now, I did do some filtering on this because uh, beforehand, whenever I created this, if I did cell hit zero, there is some bad cells in here. Specifically, if you look right here, we know that 833 and 916 in that range is not correct. So this is a prime example of the more that you can drive once you get your mass airflow sensor in, the more likely that this is to be accurate. So because of that, I'm going to come back in here. I'm going to put five cell hits required on here to try and filter out any bad stuff. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this table and paste it over. And we're just going to do our initial paste in here and see if this will get the truck running. So if we do this, paste that in, calculate. This area is going to be an issue right there. I'm not too worried about it right now because we're just trying to get this thing idling. So I will copy this table over, go over to the open one because this is the important one, paste it in, calculate, should stay the same. And then we are going to save this as virtual, uh, I can't call it, well, let's call it a virtual, virtual, virtual VE table. So let's jump in the truck. I'm going to load this up and then we'll see if this thing actually fires up or not. Okay, we've got the uh, the tune flashed in here. I'm going to go ahead and connect the scanner up. And this is going to be the moment of truth. We are not looking for a perfectly running vehicle. We are just trying to get this thing started, get it running good enough that we can actually go through the uh, tuning process for speed density. So that's going to be the question, whether or not we can get this thing even started. So fingers crossed. Okay, we got her started for a second. Let's try this again. Okay, so we're cranking over at least this time. Let's see if we can make some adjustments. Okay, so we're running lean right there in the 1,000 RPM range, 800 to 1,000 RPM range, we need to add about 20% in there. So let's try this. We'll go into our VVE table, and that was calculated. So in that, let me double check our pressure ratio, 25 to 34, yep. So that was not filled in by our previous uh, map tuning cycle because we're going below where the map was operating. So if we bring all this up by 1.2, in fact, we can probably just multiply the whole dang thing by 1.2. Copy that over. And let's flash this one in. We'll save this as step two. 
flash this one in, see if we can get it running. Okay, so we've got the adjusted one in there where we went in and added some fueling. We're going to uh, fire, we're going to let everything warm up again, connect the logger up, and try and capture the area if it stumbles again or whether or not it takes off. Hopefully the adjusted fueling that we just added in will uh, resolve our situation here. So fingers crossed once again that we might actually get it to fire off with a completely blank slate here. Oh, so close, so close. And it's whenever we're dipping low like that yeah seems like a thousand let's see if we can't bump the the idle up here to keep it running We're going to leave the VE table where it's at. It's a little bit rich now on that lower end, but I don't think that's an issue. I want to see if I can't get this thing to just idle. We can get it to start idle. We can start tuning it from there. Want to stay running? It's running pretty rich. I think it's going to stay running. Now granted, if you look at our EQ that's commanded right now, it is commanding 0.85 because we are in the warm-up phase. And so our error ratio is only at 2% right now. This thing's running pretty good given that the table was completely zeroed out just 10, 15 minutes ago, and we populated new values just off of mass airflow readings. Uh, I'm kind of mind blown right now. This is super awesome. I'm super stoked about this. This is complicated as all get out for the virtual VE tables, but on Gen 3s, this would be super easy to implement, where if you did some seriously crazy mods, uh, I'm talking heads, cam, supercharger all at once. If you could get it running on mass airflow, you could then use that data to get a base VE table started in which you could start tuning your speed density out. So, I mean, this is, this is pretty interesting stuff. We're going to have to dive further down the rabbit hole on this for sure. But right now we have a operational vehicle on speed density that had a completely blanked out table. Sweet. So there you have it. We took a mass airflow sensor reading, converted it over to a VE table, and was able to get the truck up and running after completely wiping it out. Theoretically, this should work on about any platform. The mass airflow sensor is a lot easier to dial in, and in fact, I will do a video similar to this where we take a, a scaled the math and just blast it down to zero, keep the truck from running, and then we will work on getting the truck started without a math curve. And then you'll have to do a little more tuning to get your math curve built out, but it'll be a pretty easy process. It'll be the easiest process for getting a new vehicle running. Now there's a lot of other different things that go into this whenever it comes down to tuning. This is not an end all be all, this is just a starting point. We are just trying to get the vehicle idling in speed density, that way we can get logs and start doing our AFR EQ error, and then we can start building out from that point in time. But that being said, if you enjoyed this video, make sure and hit the thumbs up. If you have not subscribed already, hit the subscribe button down in the corner and ring that bell. That way you don't miss out on the live shows. That's where a lot of this stuff comes from. I wanna thank the viewer that suggested this or asked this question, and for the guys that helped out on, on getting some of this information around. It's been super awesome, super stung, super pumped about this one. This is one of the more fun ones that we've done in a while. So that being said, make sure and check out the merch. There's the Patreon down below if you need help with tuning. Make sure and sign up on the Patreon. Just check it out. You get some access to special behind the scenes stuff like that. 
But that being said, remember, ABT, always be tuning. And as always, thanks for stopping by the garage.